Greetings gastronauts, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith, and today I'm going to do something really rich, luscious and meaty. I'm going to make ox cheeks with buttery mashed potato. So this was requested back in November 2021, so it only took me a bit over a year to get to it, by Billy B. Yeah, he asked for beef cheeks, but basically the same thing. And if you don't know, an ox is a bullock. It's a castrated bull uh, to make it less aggressive. And beef cheeks or ox cheeks were, were always considered to be a cheap cut. They're not really now since a lot of restaurants started doing them and foodies latched on to the trend. But they can actually be a bit hard to find. Um, so that's my excuse for not doing it sooner, Billy. Uh, but I did manage to find some just before Christmas. Um, so they've been in the freezer waiting for the Christmas period to elapse before I could do them. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, share, subscribe, etc. And let's get on with it. Ox cheeks and super buttery mashed tatties. Right, ingredients really quite simple. I need half a litre of beef stock made up from a cube. Or the real thing if you've got any and a carrot, a stick of celery, and a bit, and a medium onion, and two ox cheeks. So these are both about 200 grams. And you can see there's tons of connective tissue, which is gonna take a long, slow cook to break down. So if you heard me say slow cooker and you haven't got one you wanted to run away, you can do it in a, a regular saucepan or Dutch oven on, on the stove top, and that'll take about three hours to get the beef really tender. Or you could do it in a pressure cooker in about 30 or 40 minutes. Depends on what gear you've got and how much time you've got. So slow cooker will work brilliantly for this, for me. So what I need to do first is get this beef good and brown. I've been wondering about whether I should uh, cut it into chunks and, and coat them in flour, which is what people quite often do with beef stew kind of things. And um, actually that's not the best thing to do. It, it's what was always done, but... Uh, there's, there's no real benefit from it unless you like the taste of burnt flour. Don't quote me on that, it's a joke, right? So I'm just gonna pop them in my uh, cast iron casserole thingy and I'll just spray the meat with some oil, not spray the pan. While the meat is cooking, we just want to cut our vegetables into dice, cubes, slices. We will end up mashing these into the cooking liquids. And the onions. Shall we use the magic knife? I think we will. Ready? Three, two, one. Okay, let's get cooking. So I've got my beef cheeks nicely seared and I'm gonna deglaze the pan with the stock. That will also get the stock hot again. And this is my slow cooker crock pot. I've rinsed the ceramic inner container with uh, hot water because uh, that's been sitting in a cupboard and it's freezing cold. You know, just, just to help the cooking get a, get a head start. And the veggies, I haven't sweated them or anything because, uh, well, I don't think there's any need to, but, but we just want them to more or less disintegrate into the liquid. Then we get the stock, and that more or less covers the meat. We don't want too much liquid because we want to end up with something quite thick and rich and luscious. I'll add a couple of bay leaves, and I've got a small handful of flat leaf parsley, which needs to be chopped. And that can go in. And I've got some more of this for garnish at the end. Pinch of salt and a good ground of black pepper. I'll turn that up to high and then give that, oof, really it wants about six hours. Uh, if you do it on medium, it would take eight hours. Right, the meat is actually really tender now, so I'll turn that off and uh, we'll sort that out in a minute. But I need to get cracking with me buttery mash. So I need some potatoes. Actually not completely peeled because I'm gonna use a potato ricer and that kind of separates the skin out at the end by magic. 
so I don't need to do that. If you're using a masher, you will need to peel them. Cut them into chunks about the same size, about like that. So I'll pop these in a pan. There'll be quite a lot more mash than I need for this one meal, but uh, it keeps, <laughs> it will get used. Just like that. And a uh, big old pinch of salt. And we'll put that on the stove, bring it to the boil and let it cook for 15 to 20 minutes until the potatoes are really tender. Right, I'm going to finish off the sauce, so to do that I need to take the meat out. And I'm going to put it on this warmed plate. <laughs> that is definitely cooked. And I'll just cover it with foil to keep it warm. Now I'm going to whiz this with an uh, immersion blender to squish all the vegetables and, and thicken up the sauce. Now I'm going to pass this through a sieve just to get rid of any surviving lumps and, and you know make the sauce really nice and thick. This could take some time. Okay there we go it's um, quite a bit runnier than I want so I'm going to pop it on the stove and heat it rapidly to reduce quite a lot. I meant to mention this earlier, a lot of recipes would use um, a cup of red wine in that sauce, and so would I normally, but I'm doing dry January, <laughs> and if I get a bottle of wine and just use one cup of it, I will drink the rest, I just will. So I'm, uh, I'm skipping that part. It still tastes magnificent. So the spuds, right, I've drained them. They're just kind of steam drying. And then pop them in your wonderful potato ricer. And give them a squeeze. And I told you it magically separates out the potato skin. It's a bit messy, but it does work. I was calling it buttery mash, so I'd better put some in. I've got a hundred grams of butter here. You might think is excessive, and I agree. That's all the potatoes gone through the ricer. Now, uh, a teaspoon of salt, some white pepper, and a splash of rug. And I'll just mix all that together with a fork. Make sure you get all that butter melted in. There we are, lovely, insanely buttery mashed potato. Right, we're all done, so let's plate it up. Nice warm plate. Little lake of gravy sauce. And some veggie bubbles. And now it's taste test time with Mrs. Keith Cooks. Oh, Paul. Hello, darling. You alright? Yeah. yeah. What have we got here? Oh, melt in the mouth, ox cheek. Sounds good to me. I know I like ox tail, so. Oh, that could mean I like both ends of the beast. Mm hmm. Well, that is certainly good. Is that gravy made from the meat? Yeah, yeah. and salt. Mmm! Right then. Mm -hmm. See you next time. Hang on. <laughs> oh, right. Oh. Still eating. <laughs> that really, you know, six hours. Mm. It works. <laughs> All right. Long day, want to sit down. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Mm -hmm.